All right, uh, let's begin our session today. Uh, a warm welcome to everyone. Just give me one minute. Okay, um, a warm welcome to all of you and welcome to today's session on healthy uh, Valentine recipes. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Alpha and uh, cooking is something that I love and making them healthy uh, is something that I strive. So um, definitely healthy cooking is tasty and healthy cooking can be easy with the choice of right ingredients, right? So let's begin our session today. I have four recipes for you, all lovely looking and tasting and healthy as well, which you can make with easily available ingredients at home. Um, so I will be um, demonstrating the recipes. Any questions you have, you can post it at the end of the session. After each recipe, we will be sharing the recipe in the chat box so you can make a note of it. Uh, so uh, Valentine's Day is approaching and usually Valentine's Day is um, celebrated across the world um, to, uh, to show your love to your for your loved one. Um, and also, you know, um, the celebrations usually are with teenagers and with college kids and all, but uh, Valentine's Day can also be an excuse to not only pamper your loved ones, but pamper yourself as well, because most often we neglect our own selves, right? Uh, if there is a day where we can take care of ourselves, uh, just make something specially for you or um, uh, just do something specially for you, whether it's healthy cooking, whether it's pampering yourself with a manicure or pampering yourself with a spa or a bath, a good long bath, um, whatever it is, it's always, you know, you feel good, you feel appreciated, you feel loved. Uh, so self-care is something which is very important and a great way to start or a great way to take care of yourself is use one of these days. Uh, like Valentine's Day to pamper yourself. So the best, I think food is, they say food is a way to man's heart, right? So food has got the potential uh, to, uh, to go to, to please someone, to make someone happy. Uh, and uh, in today's pandemic where, you know, we are not celebrating as much, we are not going out as much, um, so if you can make the delicacies at home, what is better, right? It's much, much easier. It's much better. And if you can make it healthy, that's all the more important. So let's begin without much ado. Um, I'm going to demonstrate four recipes. The first recipe is a healthy brownie, which has got a, a, an ingredient, which most of you will not be able to guess. Uh, will not be able to taste it, but it gives that perfect brownie texture, the healthy way uh, to the perfect brownie texture without adding any oil in the recipe. So the first recipe is a sweet potato brownie without any oil. Uh, so let's begin our first recipe. So first I will take um, a mixer jar and to this, uh, as the name suggested, it's sweet potato brownie, right? So I have taken one sweet potato, um, just peeled off the skin, chopped it or boiled it, or you can boil it whole uh, and then peel off the skin. Um, so um, this is boiled, peeled, chopped sweet potato, one cup. And I have some liquid also, which I have boiled the sweet potato. So instead of adding any water, I'm using the same liquid. Okay, so in goes our sweet potato. The second ingredient, which is the healthy ingredient for our brownie is dates. Uh, so there are about, I've taken about eight dates, uh, removed the pit 
and uh, I have soaked it in hot water so that it becomes soft and it's easier to grind. So again, it's about eight small dates with about one fourth cup of water. Um, so I will add our dates as well. The third ingredient that I have, so instead of oil, uh, I'm adding some, an ingredient which is healthy and which is definitely uh, an addition which is um, which is going to give a lot of good benefits to this uh, brownie and it is peanut butter so you can take any nut butter peanut butter almond butter any but nut butter you have if you don't have nut butter you can substitute this with uh, any oil or ghee um, so it's about two spoons or uh, roughly about one fourth cup So these are our wet ingredients. Now we'll just grind these. Very easy recipe, which you can make it very easily. Don't have to worry if your uh, brownie is going to become hard or soft or anything. It will become good no matter how you make it. That's it. So just make it into a paste and we'll keep it aside. Let's take our dry ingredients. So take a bowl and I said it's healthy brownie, right? So typically the brownies are made up with maida or refined flour, but we are not going to do that. So the flour that I'm taking is oats flour. You can either take oats flour, you can take whole wheat flour, you can take almond flour, um, or you can take ragi flour, joar flour, whichever flour you have, apart from maida, any flour will work over here in this recipe. So I have one third cup of oats flour over here with me. And I have about half a cup of cocoa powder. And I have um, about one fourth cup of jaggery powder. You can use jaggery powder. You can use um, brown sugar or you can increase the dates and um, instead of eight dates, you can use about 16 dates and omit the jaggery powder as well. I find the combination of dates and jaggery goes very well with this dish. Okay, so we add the jaggery powder as well. If you don't have powdered jaggery, you can add the jaggery pieces to the uh, date and uh, sweet potato and you can grind it together. Uh, a pinch of salt. Salt always brings out the sweetness. So don't forget to add salt in your cakes and brownies and cookies. About half a spoon of uh, baking powder. Just a little bit. Normally in brownies, we don't add baking powder or soda. But because here the flour is very less and we are not adding any other uh, rising agent. So adding a half a spoon of baking powder. That's about it and let's mix our ingredients. So didn't I tell it's a very easy recipe which you can make it very easily at home. So a quick recap, uh, blend boiled sweet potato with soaked dates and um, peanut butter uh, to a paste. Mix in oats flour, cocoa powder, some jaggery powder, a pinch of salt and baking. Uh, powder and now just mix your wet ingredients with your dry ingredients. So no uh, beater is needed. Uh, you don't have to really worry about how you are mixing it. It's a very easy mix recipe and I have kept my uh, oven. Uh, I have, I'm preheating the oven so that I can bake the brownie. If you don't have oven, you can make it on the stuff top and I'll just tell you how you do it. Okay, let's mix this. This batter will be very thick, unlike the cake batter, 
This will be a thick batter because we want fudgy brownies, not like soft cakey brownies. These will be soft on the inside, will not be properly cooked like cake and will have the brownie texture on the outside. And the moment you put it in your mouth, they will melt in your mouth. So the fudgy texture you'll get of a good brownie. Oops, I have messed up over here. So be careful when you're mixing. All right, so just to show you the texture of the batter, it's pretty thick, okay? And you can pour it, but it's not runny. So that's a sign that this is properly incorporated. Now, um, the, the next two ingredients, a little bit of a splash of vanilla. And I'm adding some chopped dark chocolate. This is optional. You can either add it or you can omit it. But all of us love some chocolate in the brownie, right? And some chopped walnuts. You can add walnuts, you can add almonds. Again, this is, you can omit it, um, but brownie and walnuts really go hand in hand. So adding a couple of walnuts, chopped ones, raw walnuts. Again, just mix it up. Don't over mix your batter because you don't want your brownie to just um, not rise and uh, sink. That happens when you over mix a cake batter. That's it. Our batter is ready to be put in the oven. So I have a, a tray here, baking tray. Just pour the batter in your tray. And our oven is also ready to be baked, the brownie to be baked. Now just level this up with the back of your spoon. Once you eat these brownies, you will not want store brownies, store-bought brownies again. And what a great day to make these than Valentine's Day, right? Okay, we just flattened it. And now again, a sprinkle of some chocolate on top, dark chocolate, because chocolate is never enough, right? So that's it. Um, this is how I've spread the batter uh, and sprinkled it with chocolate. And this goes in preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. And you can check it with a toothpick to see if it is done or not. And then you can um, put it back in the oven if you feel it's not done. Okay. So 20 minutes at 180. And our brownie is ready to be baked. Like I said, if you don't have an oven, how do you make the brownies? Just put it in a steel uh, round box or a square box or an aluminum one. Um, you would want to uh, first grease it with oil or ghee or butter and then dust it with flour. And then you put in your brownie mix or you can line it with a parchment paper and you put the brownie in, um, heat a big pot, preferably a non-stick pot or a heavy bottom one, uh, a pressure cooker, just heat it on medium flame, um, covered on your gas. Uh, once it's heated, you put a stand. Um, the stand can be either like this or you can put a, a, a bowl or something in your cook, in the, uh, in the pot and then you can put this pan on it and cover it. If it's a pressure cooker, remove the rubber gasket and remove the whistle out, right? Always remember when you're baking something, don't put the rubber gasket nor the whistle. So you cover it, put it on slow and let it cook for about 20 minutes. So even that 
will equally will give an equal result as good as baking in an oven so that's how you would make it without an oven um so let's move on to our um second recipe till our uh, brownie is baking okay so let me just clean this mess up all right um so moving to our second recipe um the second recipe is a nice and colorful recipe um so usually valentines day is associated with the color red right uh, so red because red and heart red heart is something which goes by so we are making a bright red smoothie as our second recipe and it is um the berry beet smoothie so beetroots are something that i love to use a lot on valentines day for the red color instead of using any artificial colors even if i'm making uh, red velvet cakes or um, anything which is got, which needs red beetroot is my go to vegetable um, so yes i'll be using beetroot uh, in two recipes today uh, i have here boiled and peeled beetroot um beetroots excellent sources of what we call as anthocyanins these are antioxidants or poly uh, uh, anti inflammatory compounds which protect our heart which are extremely protection protect uh, which protect us from cancers from inflammation pains um so very good for the heart so any of the red colored fruits and vegetables are great for our hearts so please make sure this valentines day at least include one red colored fruit or vegetable in your diet for you and your family so we are going to use uh, beetroots in the smoothie i think i can make it in this um so i'm going to add about uh, half a cup of uh, boiled beetroots then um to this i'm adding half a cup of berries again berries are excellent in antioxidants and i have here is uh, frozen um strawberries and blueberries it's the season for strawberries if you don't get berries you can substitute this with a banana uh, which also gives a nice uh, texture to the smoothie so adding in about half a cup of berries uh next goes um two spoons of uh, ha one fourth cup of uh, curd or greek yogurt whatever you have at home and top it up with some milk so you can use any plant milks or any milk that you have at home so if it's summers you can add in some ice to this it's pretty cold here so i'm avoiding the ice um just adding a little bit more of milk and about a spoonful of honey for that good sweetness plus uh some um antimicrobial effects of the honey as well all right that's about it a very easy a smoothie and imagine starting your day with a nice and colorful smoothie which is going to pump up which is going to give lots of energy plus lots of love um in the form of uh, such a beautiful color so uh, a recap uh, boiled beetroots uh, some berries greek yogurt milk and a little bit of honey and we'll blend this up and if you are worried about the beetroot uh, tasting or anyone will know if you have added beetroot don't worry the berries will cover up the taste you can add in some vanilla you can add in some cinnamon you can add in any of the herbs uh, if you want a different taste but just like this also it tastes pretty good and look at the beautiful color
You can add in some chia seeds uh, to this uh, to uh, increase the protein if you want and make it more thicker as well. So our second recipe, a berry beet smoothie is ready to be devoured. Look at the beautiful color and your loved one or yourself, if you're making it for yourself, you're sure to love this to start your day well and to start your day with lots of energy, lots of good protein and will definitely bring a smile to your face. So the second recipe can be shared, uh, a berry beet smoothie. Let's move on to our third recipe till our brownie is baking. We'll check on our brownie after 10 minutes. Um, the third recipe that I have here is a little savory. We have made a smoothie. We have, we have our brownies baking in the oven. Let's go on to the savory side. And if we can make something savory, look beautiful, that is also great, right? And which doesn't require much effort. So my third recipe is a beetroot hummus. Um, one of my most favorite recipes, I mean, hummus is something that I love, um, whether it's as a spread on your bread or roti or eating with pita or dipping vegetables in it or on crackers. Um, in any form, hummus is something that uh, is made a lot in my household. And if you guys make it, that's great. But you can always notch up that hummus, make it look beautiful, as well as add in more power to it by adding in vegetables to your hummus. So let's knock up our hummus by adding in some beetroots and making it nice and colorful, as bright as the smoothie that we have made. So let's take a blender. To this, um, the main ingredient of hummus is chickpeas. Chickpeas are powerhouse of protein, uh, fiber, uh, folate, um, B vitamins, a um, lot of um, calcium, iron. So uh, a great, great food, especially for a vegetarian. Um, you can boil chickpeas and have it as a snack, as a chaat, add in as chana masala and all. But sometimes you get tired and usually um, during the snack time is where we tend to eat something which is unhealthy. Like, you know, either namkeens or biscuits or cakes or um, something sweet. So if you make hummus, um, that's a good way to add protein, fiber and some healthy twist to your snacks. Also great for kids um, and uh, you great as uh, a dip or as a dressing as well. So hummus, very versatile, but definitely very easy to make. So I'm adding a cup of boiled chickpeas and always, whenever you're making hummus, boil your chickpeas a little softer. They shouldn't be hard. Otherwise, you will not get a smooth hummus. So it should be easily crushed with your fingers uh, and mushy. So that will make a very nice and smooth hummus, which definitely tastes much better than a hard hummus. Okay, so I'm adding some uh, chickpea water as well, along with the chickpeas. So about a cup full of chickpeas go in there. Uh, and to this, I'm adding uh, about half a cup of boiled beetroot. Okay, um, salt to taste. Be careful if you have added salt when you're boiling the chickpeas. Uh, a tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, remember, if you've attended my sessions, because the uh, chickpeas, uh, beetroot, both are very high in iron. Um, and vegetarian sources of iron always need some vitamin C so that they get uh, absorbed much better. So always add some sort of vitamin C to your iron rich food. So here I'm adding some lemon, um, two to three cloves of chopped garlic, some 
cumin powder. I love the taste of cumin in hummus. Um, the main ingredient in hummus is tahini or sesame seed paste. Do not worry if you don't have tahini. Uh, you can just roast sesame seeds and add it in place of tahini. So I'm adding about a tablespoon of tahini uh, or you can add in a tablespoon of roasted sesame seeds. And let's whisk this a little. Now, another main ingredient of hummus is olive oil. There's lots of olive oil added. And then if you are on a weight loss uh, wagon or if you are watching your fat or oil intake, probably you may be a little shy of how much oil we should use. So there's a quick hack. If you want to lower the amount of oil that you add to a hummus, what you can do is you can add in a spoonful of dahi or Greek yogurt to get that smooth texture, but you can uh, reduce and reduce the amount of olive oil that you add to your hummus. So just adding about a spoonful of Greek yogurt here, and then we add in about a spoonful of olive oil. And remember, it has to be extra virgin olive oil because you are eating it raw, and the best benefits of olive oil are from extra virgin olive oil. All right, look at the color again, a beautiful pink. So let's put this in a serving plate and uh, Always uh, the best way you can garnish uh, a hummus is by adding some beautiful toppings. So we will add the hummus here and uh, just show you the texture. It's, uh, it's nice and smooth, which you can easily dip anything in this. Okay, now drizzle a little bit of olive oil on this. And let's garnish it with um, a few chickpeas. Adding in some pomegranate pearls. And some, some greens. Here I have coriander leaves. You can add mint, you can add basil, whatever. Like. And it looks very pretty. Um, so our hummus is ready to be served. Uh, I have here, you can eat it with, uh, like I said, you can eat it with pita, you can eat it with, uh, uh, you can eat it with crackers, you can eat it with rice cakes. Uh, what I have here is skewers of vegetables. So I have made some hearts out of colored peppers. Um, so you can plus olives, you can have a um, meze platter, you can put the dip, you can have some olives, you can have some uh, cucumber slices, some carrot slices, um, you can have uh, some bread pieces, uh, then uh, you can have some pickled vegetables, you can have some beetroot, some radish, any of these salad vegetables go very well with this dip. 
At the same time, you can have it with bread, pita crackers, or spread it on a toast, spread it on a roti, put in some vegetables and have it. So uh, another great snack for your Valentine's Day, uh, uh, a beetroot hummus with some vegetables. All right, so just keep it here. And let's check on our cake. I think our cake is done, uh, our brownie is done. Yeah, it's done. So time to take out the brownie. I need a clock. And I'll just show you how it looks like. It's got lovely cracks, as a brownie should have, right? And uh, it's cooked completely. Um, one thing to remember when you make brownies is don't cut it when it's hot because it will break up because it's uh, fudgy. Um, let it cool completely before you cut this. So let it cool absolutely uh, till it's uh, at room temperature and then you cut it. And you can have your brownies just like this. You can put in a dollop of um, some ice cream or some chocolate. You can um, drizzle some uh, melted chocolate on this or you eat it with some strawberries. Um, just cut some strawberries and have it with fruit. It will definitely taste great. So our first recipe, uh, the uh, uh, sweet potato oats brownie without any oil or sugar is ready which you, you and your family can surely enjoy. Let me show you cut brownies that I had made before. Um, this is how the brownie looks like. Um, and you can see uh, some good uh, crack top because that's a sign of a good brownie. And if you crack it open also, it's extremely nice and fudgy. So do try and make this and uh, Definitely something very easy, which anyone can make and something which is very healthy also. So even if you can, you eat more than a piece, it's absolutely okay because it's definitely uh, not giving you the unwanted calories and it is definitely giving you something which is beneficial to you only. So a great way to add a healthy twist on your Valentine's Day for a dessert is this um, sweet potato oats brownies. The last recipe for today is again a sweet and I think no Valentine's Day is complete without chocolates, right? We often associate Valentine's Day with chocolates. You give so many chocolates to your loved ones, but the store-bought chocolates are high in uh, fat high in sugar and you definitely feel guilty after eating a lot and you definitely want to eat more but you cannot because they are high in calories high in fat and high in sugar so what if you can make some healthy chocolate at home which is which you can eat guilt-free and you cannot you don't have to restrict to one piece you can eat more than a piece and you will be okay with it because it is healthy, right? So we're going to make some homemade snicker bars um, by using just three ingredients, quick, easy, and a healthy chocolate recipe for you today. So the main ingredient that we have for the chocolate is dates. Dates are extremely versatile when it comes to making sweets, which are healthy, right? So you can use them in place of sugar, Give, get a good texture, but at the same time, you're not compromising on the taste. So I have about um, a couple of dates here, uh, which I'll just cut and remove the seed out. Uh, remember when you're using the dates, do not slit it open completely, just slit open on one side because we want to fill these dates uh, and then we want to uh, put this in chocolate. Uh, try to take um, some firm dates uh, because that will hold the shape much better. So uh, let's pit our dates. Uh, dates are also extremely good sources of iron, good fiber, 
and perfect for those sweet cravings. Um, definitely, you know, they'll satisfy your sweet cravings instead of grabbing in for some artificial sweet. Do try eating a piece of date. Great as a pre-workout food. Great if you wake up in the morning feeling hungry. These are extremely good in uh, raising your sugar levels, but at the same time, not so high that you feel uneasy. Okay, so I have about um, six dates here which I have pitted and removed the um, pit out. Okay, now we'll be filling, it's a Snickers bar. So Snickers, as all of us know, me is associated with peanuts, right? So we need peanuts, but the Snickers has got so much of sugar um, that you, you love to eat it, but you can't eat a lot. So um, what we're going to do is uh, fill these dates with some peanut butter. This is plain peanut butter. The dates are already sweet. You don't need to add any sweetener to your nut butter. And mind you, when you're, when you're using nut butters, uh, do always look out for the label when you're buying peanut butter from outside. The label should have only peanuts. That's about it. It should not have any other ingredient because a lot of these commercial brands, the common ones, have got a lot of sugar and oil added to the peanut butter, which is again not going to be healthy for you. So um, either you make it at home by just roasting peanuts, um, peeling the skin off, and then grinding it at intervals for about eight to 10 minutes till the oil releases and a nice peanut butter is formed. You can add in a little bit of honey if you want sweetener, you can add in a little salt or cinnamon um, and you can make it. That's about it, that's all you need to make peanut butter. So let's put in some, um, a little bit of nut butter to our peanuts. Um, and don't fill it a lot because we want to close this. Along with this, to add some crunch, I'm adding some uh, roasted chopped peanuts. If you have a chunky peanut butter, you can use that. And then just close this, right? So all I've done is taken a date, cut it into, uh, slit it, filled it with nut butter, added some uh, roasted peanuts, okay? So we'll do it for all of these. Just add a little bit of nut butter, add in some peanuts and close this. This tastes very delicious. Another way to make this is if you are someone who loves truffles or you don't want chewy chocolates, um, you can grind the, you can uh, microwave the dates till they become soft and add in some peanuts, uh, peanut powder to this and mix it up uh, and you can then form into balls and you can um, refrigerate those balls and then dip those in chocolate. So that is also something that um, you can do. So this recipe, you can make it two ways. Two more to go. You can heat the Uh, another great recipe from dates that I always make uh, and we use it in place of caramel because caramel is made, uh, typically caramel is made uh, by heating sugar till it becomes brown. Then you add butter to it and cream to it and make caramel. All three are pretty unhealthy. You can't eat a lot, but caramel tastes so good. So what if you can make some healthy caramel? All you have to do is soak dates in hot water uh, till they are nice and soft and then blend it. Um, you can add a little bit of uh, your flavoring, like um, a little bit of salt uh, and uh, that's about it. Just blitz it till become, it becomes a nice and smooth paste and you can use this as a base for caramel. Now, uh, if you want the similar caramel texture, 
then you add in a little bit of coconut cream or coconut milk to it and you churn it and then you put it in the fridge you will get a similar texture as caramel but definitely healthy and you can again use it guilt free right so um, that is something that i always have in the fridge which i often use it uh, for my smoothies or top it top fruits with it if i feel a craving for dessert or just eat a spoonful of it uh, it's definitely something which you uh, will get used to it and you will definitely not go for any other uh, store bought caramels so i have my dates ready here and what i'll be doing is dipping these dates in uh, melted uh, dark chocolate so all i have done is uh, taken a dark chocolate um, the chocolate that i had today at home was the amul uh, uh, 80% cocoa chocolate so just cut it into pieces added about half a spoon of coconut oil to it coconut oil gives a very nice shine to the chocolate uh, you don't have to temper chocolate you can just melt it in the microwave 30 seconds um maybe two three times till it's completely melted and then we can use this uh, we are going to dip uh, our um, dates into that chocolate and that's it our healthy dessert would be ready uh, healthy chocolates would be ready for us to use so here i have is a uh, dark chocolate which we have melted with half a teaspoon of coconut butter Right, so this is our chocolate, which we are going to dip our dates in. So, um, I'll use a skewer so that you know it's easy to dip these dates in, and we don't dirty our hands. You can use a fork as well. and just put it on a butter paper and just show you another since i have meant chocolate i just remembered another quick dessert uh, quick chocolate that you can make for valentines day okay there are chocolates are um these are our dates which are ready now i'll show you another chocolate um which we often make on valentines day it's chocolate dipped uh, strawberries these taste amazing Uh, but remember, whenever you make it, just to have it within a couple of uh, within an hour or so, because otherwise uh, the strawberries will become mushy. So this is also a great um, chocolate, which your kids will also love. You will also love uh, strawberry. Either you can dip the entire strawberry, or you can just dip a little bit, so that the strawberry is also sealed. so either you can keep it this way with the strawberry being seen okay so let's drizzle these with some um salt our dates you can omit this but i personally love some salt on the chocolates okay and this goes in the fridge for about 
10 to 15 minutes or in the freezer for about five minutes till it solidifies and you can enjoy your homemade snicker bars guilt-free. You can eat one, two, three, absolutely okay. It's healthy, it's delicious, it's tasty and it's Valentine's Day. You deserve that, right? You want to pamper yourself and you definitely deserve a treat. So let's put this and I'll show you once it's set on how it looks. All right, so that was our last recipe for the day. Uh, so we made some uh, uh, sweet potato brownies. We made some snicker bars. We made a very, very smoothie and we made a beetroot hummus. All uh, healthy, all rich with antioxidants, good fats, uh, which are extremely essential and fiber, which are extremely essential for your heart health from inside and from outside, right? So um, Valentine's Day is a day for celebration of love, support, gratitude for your loved ones. And if you can celebrate this day with cooking healthy, eating healthy, what more can you ask for, right? Um, so do try these healthy recipes. Do let us know how they turn out. You can post the pictures of what you have tried and Tag Healthify Me on your social handles. We would love to post these uh, on our page on your behalf. Um, so yeah, we'll share the recipes again in the chat box and please open up the chat box if anyone has any doubts related to the recipes. Correct. Uh, yeah, we are sharing the recipes again. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes uh, as much as I enjoyed making these. Okay, can we make the brownies in the microwave? Yes, you can, definitely you can. Um, so it would take about um, say three minutes uh, should be enough or three to five minutes. Um, explain what is uh, hummus? I think hummus is a Mediterranean dip, uh, which is made with a base of chickpeas uh, and usual ingredients for a classic hummus is uh, chickpeas, garlic, olive oil, um, tahini paste or sesame seed paste with lemon and lots of olive oil and salt. That's a classic hummus. But we, we gave a twist to it today by adding some beetroots. Um, what is the shelf life? Uh, I don't know for which recipe you are asking for. If it's brownies, it would stay for up to three to four days for sure. Uh, hummus also in the fridge for three to four days. Uh, the dates, uh, snicker bars can stay forever, but trust me, it won't last for a day as well in the house. Uh, and a smoothie has to be had right away because uh, uh, it has got a mixture of uh, yogurt and milk. So you would want to drink it up right away. Um, how many calories does, he, does each piece? So a brownie, if you take a proper big size, it would be about 190, 180 calories. Definitely not a lot but good amount of protein uh, and very less fat, right? It, and it is the good fat. Um, smoothie would be around the range of the same um, range. Uh, the dates dates would be hardly any, uh, probably about 50, 40 to 50 calories. And hummus, depending on how much you take, um, usually uh, as a dip, it would have very less calories. Uh, coconut oil used as normal oil or with blue cover. I don't know what blue cover is. Uh, I usually use the coconut oil, which is uh, uh, which is cold pressed coconut oil, which I add it in the recipes and use it uh, quite a lot in my food as well. Um, okay, share some more recipes of soup, donut, paneer, chicken, I guess, yeah, coming, uh, we will show more recipes. Um, uh, how to see the previous recipes, they are available on YouTube. Most of my sessions are uh, 
there on the YouTube. So you can definitely go and check out those recipes. And there are quite a lot of my recipes on Healthify Me page as well. So you can go to Healthify Me and check out. Uh, yes, the recording can be seen on YouTube. Uh, in the smoothie, curd and milk both are used together, aren't they opposite? Well, uh, Mona, this is uh, as uh, there are a lot of conflicting uh, thought lines of thought when it comes to curd and milk, as as compared. Like um, when we talk about Ayurveda, probably they don't recommend. But if I am a nutritionist, uh, from a nutritionist perspective, milk, when you drink, also becomes curd in your stomach because that's how the milk is digested, right? So if you're mixing milk and curd together, uh, I don't see any problems uh, by doing so. In fact, I have been drinking smoothies since a very long time and absolutely okay. Um, so if you're able to tolerate it, there is absolutely no harm and it, is, it doesn't become toxic or anything. It is something which can be digested together in your stomach anyways. Um, I have never used olive oil. So can you please let me know if olive oil is used for cooking and salad dressing the same? Any good brand you can suggest? Well, uh, that's a good question, Tanya. The olive oil, if you've never used, it's something very important you should know. Olive oil is one of the most abused oil um, because olive oil is supposed to be very healthy. So people just use it in any form and any olive oils which are available in the market. Now, olive oil, there are four grades which are available. The best olive oil for you uh, or with the maximum benefits is the extra virgin olive oil or the EVOO. What it essentially means is the oil is extracted from the olives without using any uh, heat or any machines. It is just extracted. So it has got all the good um, nutrients in it, specifically the omega-3 fats, right? and which are extremely beneficial to you. So because it is made without any processing, you are going to eat it also without any processing. So EVOO, uh, which is the best olive oil, should be used only for salad dressings, should be used on top of foods or just for a quick stir fry so that its properties are not destroyed. Olive oil is never meant for long-term cooking. The next olive oil is the virgin olive oil, which you can use for stir fries or sabzis. But again, do not cook it for a very long time. It still has got good properties. There are other olive oils which are very transparent one and the very common one which is available is the pomace oil, which is the lowest grade of olive oil which does not offer any benefits of olive oil. It is as good as any other refined oil, right? So don't go and buy cans and cans of olive oil for Indian cooking. You absolutely don't need to do that. We have good Indian oils, which are there for our cooking. We have groundnut oil, sesame oil, mustard oil, coconut oil, which can withstand higher temperatures, which can be absolutely used for Indian cooking. Use olive oil, only for salads, right? Or raw olive oil. In smoothies, in hummus, in dips is where you're going to use the olive oil. Uh, will sweet potato increase weight if taken regularly? Sweet potato has got good fiber. It has got complex carbs, which do not raise your blood sugar levels, which keep you full for longer time. So definitely a better choice to use as a source of carbohydrate. And it, as long as you eat it in limited portions, it is definitely not going to harm you at all. Uh, uh, do we sieve the dry ingredients? No need. This is the most easiest recipe. You don't need to sieve. You don't need to uh, do anything. Just blend it, mix it up together and just bake it. That's how easy this is. Um, any good brand of peanut butter, I've never bought a store bought one, um, which I can think of, but like I said, look out for the ingredients, which says only peanuts is what is constitutes as a good peanut butter. Um, can you show us your coconut oil? Uh, well, I get it from a local uh, person who manufactures it directly. Um, so, uh, it has come, uh, it does not have a label or anything. It's in a transparent glass bottle, but it is fresh. It does not have anything on it is cold pressed. So look out for cold press or extra virgin coconut oil. That is the coconut oil that you should use. Um, 
for peanut butter peanut is mixed with water oil peanut is often mixed with oil there is a lot of vegetable oil added to it um so uh thank you so much for all of you who love the recipes and um that's great i love cooking i love uh sharing the healthy recipes and trust me you will not miss out on the store bought ones if you get the hang of cooking this way does not chocolate or cocoa powder have too much of calories cocoa powder does not have calories the one i have used is um pros not is just plain cocoa powder without sugar dark chocolate also the one that i often use is above 70% of cocoa which does not have much uh, it is bitter it is not very sweet that is why sometimes i would add a spoonful of honey or maple syrup or something to make it sweet but i would not go for a uh, sweeter brand of uh, chocolate uh since cocoa powder has caffeine um please suggest some alternative for cocoa powder um alternative for cocoa powder would be any of the nut powder you can use almond powder you can use um or you can use any of the uh, vegetable powders that you get you get uh hibiscus powder beetroot powder moringa powder any of these powders also you can use you can also skip it completely and you can use other spices like cinnamon or you can use vanilla or cardamom or any of these for flavoring uh if you're not using cocoa substitute that with uh, almond powder or you can increase the oat powder in the recipe you might want to increase the baking powder to about a spoonful um so that it gets um cooked properly uh, and instead of garlic you can skip garlic completely hummus does not need garlic you can make it without garlic following the same recipe is ghar ka desi ghee good to have if you have made desi ghee from cow milk which is the yellow color uh, which is made from which is the ghee definitely it is good but don't overuse it just because it is good like putting ghee spoonfuls of ghee in everything because it is fat no matter good fat or bad fat fat has got 9 grams of um 9 calories uh, it gives and uh, it is definitely higher uh, in um, when when in consumption when you consume you get more calories out of it so definitely um something that you would love to use it it is good for your bones it is good for your joints it's high in vitamin a it's good fats as well but it is saturated fat at the end of the day so it is going to if you have any pre existing conditions uh, high cholesterol um, uh, or high uh, heart conditions you would definitely still want to restrict the amount of ghee that you consume um my whole family is fond of junk food especially three kids at home please suggest how to change that's an interesting question sonal yes uh when does the family become fond of junk if you have junk at home or if you cook a lot of junk or if you order a lot of junk right if it is there in front of you you are going to eat it um if you don't have the junk in front of you uh, maybe one day they won't eat two days they won't eat three days they won't eat eat but then definitely they have no other choice but to eat healthy and uh don't force healthy eating by making some bland boiled food steamed food and force kids to eat it because they will never eat such food right healthy doesn't have to be just steamed and boiled food healthy just means that you are using the good ingredients even good fats good sugars good flours good carbs it's just eating the right ingredients in the right proportion right so kids food can be made healthy just like how i used beetroot in so many recipes similarly you can use um carrot puree you can use spinach puree you can make colored rotis uh, red roti green roti orange roti you can add purees in the pasta sauce don't make pasta sauce with um just uh, maida you can use oat flour instead right you can use boiled pumpkin uh to thicken your butter gravies butter chicken um butter paneer just use boiled pumpkin instead and put in some milk it will give the same texture um you can add uh, grated uh, vegetables in your um in lot of things uh beetroot is also like i said you can color it and make it add in the right spices 
and make it in a way that they can eat it. Uh, tikkis are a great way to disguise a lot of things. You can add in some boiled pulses, vegetables, and add in oats as binding or basin as binding. Make it into tikkis. They taste great and they definitely know, but they wouldn't want to order burger if you're going to make healthy burgers at home, right? Um, so it's all about... Uh, trying to cook healthy and incorporate healthy ingredients and that's how you will get the best results. Um, uh, in uh, brownie, cocoa powder can be used, cacao powder, definitely if you can get hold of cacao powder or Dutch processed cocoa, which, which is what I personally prefer, you would definitely use that. And you can... Um, uh, reduce the quantity as per you want. It's just that brownies are usually very dense and dark in color. Um, and we associate that bitter taste with brownies. So I add more. Um, all right. Um, low fat snacks. Well, one of the snacks that I showed was um, the hummus. You can make a curd dip. You can add in some uh, grated, again, you can add in grated carrot to it, grated cucumber. You can add in some um, uh, herbs to it. That becomes a dip. You can dip your vegetables in it instead of eating them plain. Uh, you can mix a bowl of fruit. You can sprinkle it with nuts and seeds. Put in some lemon, put in some honey, and that becomes a nice chart. Uh, boiled pulses, uh, makhana, just add in some onion, tomatoes, cucumber, and put in some chaat masala and lemon. That's great tangy snack. Um, khakras or rice crackers or toast put again uh, put some spread some green chutney some mitha chutney some vegetable that becomes a great snack so options are unlimited it's just how you look at it and how you um, try to fit into your routine uh, if you are an egg eater egg is a great snack greek yogurt is a great snack smoothies are great snack right so these are all great snacks how much desi ghee is fine in a day? About a tablespoon, not more, because one tablespoon or 10% of your fat should come from saturated fat. So one tablespoon is that's enough. It can be either ghee or butter, any of the saturated fat. Um, what, uh, okay, um, should we avoid maida? I would suggest so. Maida is nothing but just plain uh, refined carbohydrate which has got zero nutritive value. In fact, maida, it has got what we call as empty calories. When you eat maida, to digest that maida, because it does not have anything in it, to digest that maida, your body has to pull out from its stores of B vitamins to digest that maida. So you're actually robbing your body of stuff than giving anything to your stuff. When you eat food, it is to nourish you. It is to nurture you. It is to give you energy. So you want to eat food, which is giving you something in return. So definitely maida doesn't fall there, nor does sugar, nor does salt, nor does white refined oil. These are what we call as sins, right? The, the four sins we call uh, refined flour, refined salt, or the white sins that we call in our uh, nutrition language is white salt, white sugar, uh, white flour and white oil or refined oil. Mm. Okay, I think uh, most of you were asking the recipes, right? We have shared it again. And in case if you have missed it, you can always go back to the YouTube channel of Healthify Me, um, where this was this is being telecast live. So you can check for the recording and uh, definitely mm, you can note down the recipe again. Uh, so I hope uh, it was an interesting session and thanks a lot for all your comments. Um, do try these recipes. Do try to eat healthy. And like I said, right, it's not about cooking for others. Um, it Good health always starts from yourself. If you as a mother will eat healthy, will cook healthy, your kids, your family will eat healthy, right? So you are the first role model for your family, for your child, uh, for your kids. Um, so uh, do 
spend some time on yourself do take care of yourself do pamper yourself eat better yourself and then take care of your loved ones definitely it will benefit you and your entire family so like i said um valentine's day is all about supporting love showing gratitude for your loved ones showing love for your loved ones and the best way that you can show love you can share love is by eating healthy by cooking healthy right and healthy eating is healthy cooking is not difficult if you're just looking at the right ingredients and combining them the right way and cooking them the right way right so thank you very much for joining in uh, wish you a very happy valentine's day in advance and to those of you who are still here um these are the uh, the date chocolates that i showed um so i'll just cut it and show you um look at these these look beautiful and these taste amazing and my chocolate strawberries uh, again a great way to enjoy chocolate uh, so do try these these are i think the most easiest recipes right so do try these and um remember me when you buy store bought chocolates because you don't want to buy those you want to make these at home and eat these uh thank you very much for joining in and see you again later